In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the Christie Virtual Appliance to restore an RBMR backup. First, we're going to want to make sure that we've got our relevant rubric server added to the Christie Virtual Appliance, and we're going to do that from the Options, Backup Server Settings page, and Add New Backup Server. Hit Rubric from the drop-down list, and enter the details of your rubric server, followed by the search button. This will begin the discovery of that backup server and allow the VA to query for our available backups. Once complete, you should see the backup server listed under your configured backup servers page. Now from the recovery tab, we can begin the recovery process. Hit recover backup, select rubric as our backup source, select from which rubric server we wish to perform a restore, and then select from the drop-down list which host we would like to restore. Now we select our target environment, and for this video I will show the restore going to our vSphere environment, but the options are extremely similar for each chosen hypervisor or for a physical system. To open up the advanced settings, we're going to press the cog icon on the right-hand side, and now we are presented some options to fine tune the recovery. Starting with backup version, we can use this to select which exact backup we want to restore. By default, we will pull the last successful backup, or we can flick the toggle and choose from any backup that we still have in retention. The hypervisor configuration tab will allow us to specify where exactly we want to create the new virtual machine in our chosen target environment. The machine configuration tab will allow us to customize a few more details about that VM that's being created. The name of the VM, the amount of memory, CPU, and the size of the disks to be created. By default, this will match exactly to your original system at the time of backup, but we can take this opportunity to increase or decrease any of these values as we see fit. We also have the option here to include or exclude individual disks from the restore if perhaps you only want to restore the bare operating system and exclude some shared data disks, then that is possible using this menu. The target configuration page will allow us to set up the network configuration for our target system, both during the restore and after the restore has been finished. Here, again, we will match the settings to the original machine at the time of backup, but if we wish to change the hostname or IP configuration, this is where we can do so. Under the DR Environment Networking tab, we can set which IP configuration we wish to use whilst the target VM is booted into our recovery ISO and performing the restore of the data. Under the Post Recovery Networking tab, we can customize what network configuration will be used by the target system once the restore has finished and we have rebooted into our restored operating system. The Dissimilar Hardware tab allows us to enable or disable our Dissimilar Hardware support, and this allows us to move freely between not only dissimilar physical systems or dissimilar virtual environments, but between physical, virtual and cloud platforms entirely. Any direction you wish to move between them is fully supported by the VA and the driver injection is handled automatically. The Boot Actions tab will allow us to specify what happens when the restore finishes, either successfully or unsuccessfully. For this, we have three options leave the target as it is, we'll leave the machine booted into the recovery ISO until we tell it otherwise, reboot the target, we'll shut down the machine, unmount the ISO and boot it into the restored OS as quickly as possible, and delete the target, we'll shut down and delete the VM. And under the advanced configuration tab, we can enable or disable the verbose login, post recovery boot checks, and if we wish to use web boot in this environment, this is where we can enable it. Once we're happy with the settings that we've specified, press save and this will kick off the restore job. This will then complete in four main phases and no more user involvement is needed beyond this point. In the first phase, the VA is communicating with our chosen hypervisor and creating the new virtual machine, attaching the ISO file and booting it up into our recovery environment. 
Then in the second phase, we will format and partition the disks, create all the file systems and mount points to lay out the disks matching the original layout of the system at the time of backup. Then in stage three, we'll use the rubric agent to restore all of the backed up data onto our freshly laid out system before moving on to our final phase where we'll perform our dissimilar hardware driver injections, update the boot stanza and so on to make sure the system boots and functions as expected in the new environment.